Hello. How are you doing? I'm good, man. How are you? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Um, welcome, everybody. Best Buds Podcast. Whoa! Best Buds Podcast. This is episode four, right? Uh-huh. This is four? Yeah, episode four. So, um, in this episode, it's just you and I. So Zach and Brett. Can you introduce yourself? I'm Brett. I'm Zach's little brother, and I am also the son of Ann and Kyle Cocker. And I am Zach, Brett's older brother, and the son of Ann and Kyle Gaga. <laughs> so, today, in the Best Bud Podcast, episode four, we're going to be talking about what it's like working with your brother and owning a business together and running a business together. I would have never thought. <laughs> what, that you had never. been running a business? Not with you, no. Yeah, I would have hated to do that dude, when I we hated, were younger. I, I hated you. <laughs> I know. I hated you, dude. When we were younger, is is horrible. It was, it was, <laughs> when we were younger, uh, I used to pick on bread a lot. Dude, I remember this one time. Uh, I want to say it was like Kate Johnson. Is it Johnson or Johnston? Johnston. Kate Johnston and Hunter Gant. Hunter right. G? Hunter G. Yeah. Hunter G. It makes music um, now. So... I remember, I don't know, I don't know how old I was. I was probably like nine, ten, mm-hmm. right? And like, obviously, I wanted to play with y'all because like y'all are like bigger people, like you know, my older we're brother. Cool, yeah, people. you're cool, you're cool, you know. Um, and I remember that we were running outside, like playing hide and seek or something, and uh, like Cade gets like, like he's full mounted on me. I'm like back on the ground, right? And then, do you remember the typewriter? Yeah, I remember doing typewriter. Oh, on your chest? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Deer, and then like a space would be a slap to the face. Yeah. And then like M O M mom. Like it was like the frog. Like you make. Like, yeah, you'd uh, frog him with you'd your. Frog him in the chest. Oh my God, dude. He and couldn't you, do that now. Nah. Nah. <laughs> you would just nah. flip him over immediately. I know, I know how to escape full mount. Okay. You would Uji <laughs> Uji Itsu him. But God, dude, I remember like, and then you have like Blake Sherman, like. Oh, oh my like, gosh, dude. I was terrorized. I was absolutely terrorized as a kid. Hey, it made you tougher, though, didn't it? It made me tough. It made me tough. Yeah. yeah. And everybody liked you because I got to beat up on you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I want to see him now. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, a lot of them are doing pretty good. <laughs> you know? Dude, Blake's doing really good. He makes a lot of money. You said Rolex he had the yeah. was it I think it's called the ghost face? Yeah, it was a it like zooms yeah. in on the date. It was a Rolex dead date ghost face. That's super cool. Awesome. Yeah, that's like a thirty thousand dollar watch. It, so we had like this childhood friend of ours, uh he's an auctioneer and his yeah. dad was like a I want to say state winner. No, he's a right? national a auctioneer national, champion. Yeah, national auctioneer champion. And um is Blake now? Blake is. Uh, he's in the competition, so he yeah. did it last year, but he works for Bear Jackson Auctioneers. Yes, and they sell, like, antique cars and everything. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> I think it was, like, the second year he was doing it, he bought a limousine that was painted the Texas flag. Oh, yeah, it, has it had the, horns on the front. <laughs> it has horns on the front. It's like an old Cadillac. It was pimping, dude. It was pimping. It, it was pimping. Wait, does he still have it? No, nah, he sold it. Oh, man. I know. That would be Honestly, a limo would be so cool to have. Uh, no. They're really cheap because they're all literally cut in half and then stretched. Yeah. So I don't know, but th- that's so cool that he had a limo. I know, dude. Like growing up was crazy. It was like it was. We, we did some wild stuff. We we've, we've caught many many fields on fire. I talk about that all the time. We probably caught eight fields on fire doing yeah, like fire allegedly. Work. Allegedly, allegedly, yeah. legend yeah. tells. The le- as the yeah. as the legend says, as the legend says. But uh, yeah, yeah I never, I never would have thought we would have ran a business together. Never, yeah. never, never. And like, man, there were multiple times I thought we were gonna burn down houses. Yeah, same. What makes me think that we could run a business? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> what are you? Uh, would you have ever thought that you would have been in the cannabis industry when you were younger? Uh, no. Probably when I was around... Not in high school, but like oh, you know, middle no. school and stuff no, like that. No, because I looked at like kids who went in like to the bathroom and stuff and smoked. Mm. I really saw it as a really bad thing. Like yeah. I, I was like, I would never like, in my life do it, you know? And, uh, and now you're a hypocrite. Now, yeah, I'm a hypocrite. <laughs> I sell, like, people that I knew back then buy our product, <laughs> you know? Yeah. That, exactly that would go into the like, bathroom dude, i never thought i never thought you'd be doing this i know it's and cool man 
Yeah, I like it. It, it. it is. It's so different that like you have a different passion for it because like it's an opportunity that nobody gets. Yeah, you, you know, like in a million years, like if you told me back in middle school or like high school, well, no, well, late high school, I knew that we would, but like freshman, you know, and you told me never, I would have said you're kidding. I mean, that's funny. Well, senior year, you knew. Oh yeah, dude. <laughs> I was like knew. selling cap rock senior year. Like I brought like CBD oils to school, and they're like, "Brett, you can't, like, you can't be doing that, dude." Like it's legal. I'm like, it's legal, not for you guys, but it's legal. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I mean, it was funny. That's pretty cool. Um, what about I think. Oh, sorry. Go. Oh ahead. no. Go ahead. What about you? Well, I never thought that I would be doing this. Because I was the same with you. Like, people that smoked in high school, I would stayed away from them because I didn't want to get in trouble. And I thought they were potheads and losers and all that other stuff. And then I dropped out of college. And I was like, maybe this stuff isn't so bad, you know? <laughs> I was like, oh, I actually like doing this stuff. So um, I like taking this stuff. Yeah. Indulging mm-hmm. in the, the lettuce. Yeah. And I think, the like. So-called devil's lettuce. Yeah. I think, like, along the same lines, I think, well, since we were raised by the same people, we both think the same back then as, like, it's not it's not a good thing. You know, like, don't yeah. don't be, like, smoking at a like, young age, a super young age. But, like, then you find out that, you know, it's really not bad at all. It's, there's a, things that are legal that are a lot worse. Oh, yeah. You know? There's things that are legal that are terrible for you. Yeah, like, dude, like alcohol. Yeah, alcohol is literally poison. But it's fun as hell. It is really fun. <laughs> <It makes laughs> I, I, I'll, awesome. <laughs> I'll probably never stop drinking alcohol, but yeah. but it is bad for you. Yeah, the moral is that like I I personally think that like cannabis is way more healthy, you know, than it's not as dangerous. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you might get a little paranoid, but it's okay. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's not perfectly healthy, but you know, nothing's perfectly yeah. healthy. Um, but. God, man, I forgot what I was saying. I think, I think that, like, doing this now, people come up to me and they're always saying, like, you know, I can't believe you're doing this, Zach. I can't believe you're doing this, you know. Mm-hmm. I, like, when, when we were farming, because I used to farm with Dad, and when uh, my Kyle, right? I used to farm with Kyle, and I, I thought that's always what I wanted to do. But then I tried it, and I was like, oh, <laughs> I never want to do this yeah. anymore. The summer where me and you work, uh, were like the sprinkler maintenance. The sprinkler that maintenance. sucked. That was yeah, horrible. That was terrible. That was absolutely miserable. It was like 114 degrees outside, like five times out of the week. It was, oh. I'm God. sure it wouldn't be as bad anywhere else, right? But just of where we are, how hot it gets here is terrible it's it's pretty unbelievable actually and like we like have like 115 this. degrees was the hottest week i've ever had and it was consistently 115 and the surface of the sands like 120 degrees yeah, and my boots melted yeah, yeah your feet like my sweat. boot melted one day <laughs> because the sand was so hot it's funny, man. But yeah this is so much easier <laughs> you know like it is it's a lot easier but it's also a lot more rewarding Oh, yeah. Like when you see people that we sell stuff to, um, it actually helps them. It's almost like, okay, when like when we were farming and stuff, you know, it's kind of just like day in and day out. Like you go and like you go, you come home, you know, you get that one paycheck a year. But like this, it's a mystery what what's going to happen. You know, it's a complete like. Yeah, because they might make it illegal the yeah, next day. You have no idea. <laughs> and like with farming, you know at the end of the year, you're always going to get a paycheck. You will always get a paycheck. Yeah. yeah. Well, that, I mean, that depends on if you get a crop out. But yeah, at, at the end of the day, you know, you're going to get. That's what they got insurance for. Yeah. So <laughs> so like this is more more of a gamble, but it's like it's a lot more exciting, you know. Um, you come You come in and even though we do the same thing every day, Every day is different. We see a lot it is different. Like yeah. and with the community, you know, things happen day in and day out that you don't expect. I agree. And like with farming, you know, like conventional farming, mm-hmm. 
you always there is always something different to do, but every year you repeat the same stuff. Mm-hmm. So it's just a longer period of repeating things, and you do get a bigger break because you don't have to work in the winter, right? Yeah. But excuse me, you know, with thank you, the work is a lot harder, mm-hmm. a lot harder. Yeah, and it's not like. It's not like, oh man, this works hard. It's like, oh, I'm exhausted. <laughs> My whole body hurts. I'm wet. I'm mm. literally dripping wet from the sprinklers, like watering on me and all this other stuff. And like, oh man, I got a freaking gouge in my arm from it's like, gritty. working on equipment. Yeah, it's gritty. It's gritty work. Um, it definitely made me a better person doing that though. Oh yeah. It made because me it made me think <laughs> it made me I humbly. never want to do this ever again. Yeah. But it was crazy, man. But like Going back to, like, this type of, of work, you know, like, and owning this, like, with you and, and mom and dad and, like. And learning how to run a business. Yeah, learning how to run a business, you know, and, like, thank God we have a little bit of guidance, you know. Yeah. Um, but, like, everything fell into place. It, like, it did. Perfectly. Yeah. You know, um, one that surprises me, I never would have thought that you wanted to go out and talk to people. Like, well, when we were little, I hated talking to people. Dude, I know. But, like, you know, now, so, like, when I worked at Becknell, is a, a warehouse gig. They sold, like, ag equipment, like plows, uh, plows, hydro, hydraulic fittings, uh, nuts, bolts, all that other jazz, you know, pumps. Um, they were kind of molding me to be a salesman there, and I thought that's what I wanted to do. Mm-hmm. And then turns out i didn't like that company at all not because they're a bad company but because i didn't fit in there right and it was just a dead-end job right exactly so i was kind of already molded to i guess go talk to people Mm -hmm. but i don't know it's just i never thought i would have like you said whenever i was younger i would never thought i would have been able to go talk to people like that i thought i thought it'd be me no lie (laughs) <laughs> I did too. <laughs> I, did I can't too. shut up. Well, I still can't shut up, but I don't know. It's good. It's, it it fits well in like I never would have thought that I like plants so much more than people. Yeah, I do. I'm addicted to it. I'll just sit in the grow room for like an hour and just look. And I'm just like, oh. Yeah. I thought it would have been reversed. I do the dad stance. I'm like, hmm. Yes. Very good. Very yeah. good. Grow babies. Grow. <laughs> <laughs> when they're watering the grass, they're like, "Oh, the grass looks green." Oh, I can see it growing while I'm standing. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, watch it grow. But yeah, I thought the roles would have been reversed, honestly. Yeah, me too. But I, I realized that I really suck at it. I I don't think I don't, you suck at talking to people. I just think that you're not as good of having harder conversations. I can't. Yes. Yeah. And it, like, I'm not as focused on the sell or on the sale. You know, like. uh I'm more focused on like wanting to get to know you in a sense, which I don't think is bad, but I'm more focused on that than selling the product. Yeah. Or am I wrong? No, no. I think you're right. Yeah. I did. But like the hard conversation is making the sale, you know? Yes. And very hard. That's kind of like, because we did start where you would kind of sell at mm-hmm. the beginning and then. You couldn't get to the sale part. You just were in the talking and making a relationship yeah. part, but that's all it ever was. Yeah, I never like actually pushed it, you know. And then y'all be like, "Yeah, do you do you make a sale?" And I'm like, "No, but I got to know the guy pretty well. <laughs> uh, he's got two kids, yeah, and Larry two, and Jerry, yeah, Larry and Jerry, man." Yeah. Uh, but now, like to go back to like when we would do a little bit of everything, you know, um, it's good that now we all have our own roles. Truly, yeah. we don't veer into um, other ones' roles for mm-hmm. like help. Um, yeah, back then, like you needed me to help you sell, and then I also needed your help in With the grow room. Yeah, you know, and and now like and we have we have great employees, so that helps too. Yeah, you know? um, like it feels like we're up and operating now. It feels like we have a little bit of momentum. It feels very nice. I agree. I don't. I don't think that we're on our stride yet. Though I don't think we're on our stride, but I think we're starting. I think we're starting to move a lot more and a lot faster in these past couple months than we ever have. Yeah. No, I agree for sure. Um, yeah, that way I don't have to go out and sell anymore. People are gonna just call us. 
Yeah. You should call us, by the way. <laughs> I don't know. If you're listening to this podcast, call us if you want some stuff. But um, follow Brett the Jet on Instagram. <laughs> Brett the Jet, Brett the Jet. It's just plants. If you like yeah. plants, follow me. If you like green <laughs> stuff with five leaves, five to nine leaves. You give us a follow. But um, yeah, I think that we have came into our own roles. Um, and at the beginning, it was there's a lot of tension because we we're kind of leaning into somebody else's role more than we should have instead of saying staying in our lanes mm-hmm. but now we kind of figured out what we're good at and we stick to what we're good at oh. and if somebody needs help then they'll ask for it you know yeah it's and sometimes man and like working as a family too it is it's hard not to get in that role because like you care so much about that person and uh-huh. like you want to help but like the more that you don't help them I feel like the more that they improve as a business owner in their role. Yeah. Does that make sense? No, I agree. Yeah. Because, and like, we'll go back to the family thing right here. So, like, with family, you know, I, anybody out there that's listening that has ever tried to work on, like, let's build, like, a doghouse with my family. I think it'll be fun. Or let's build a treehouse, you know? It always ends, ends up with, what are you doing, buddy? And you're all yelling at each other, right? And <laughs> like, it's really hard because you have the family dynamic that you have to get rid of, sort of like, and you have to be professional about it. So, like, when you walk in, for example, here when you walk into work, you kind of have to push the family dynamic out of the side, right? Mm. Whenever you're making business decisions or professional decisions, or you are having business conversations, right? You kind of have to keep that in mind because, like. This is one thing I've had to learn with you is that, like, I've had to, like, really take into consideration that you know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Because as your brother, I'm like, oh, you don't fucking know what you're talking about, you know? Yeah. yeah. I'm like, you're just stupid younger brother, but (laughs) you actually know more of what you're talking, like, about the plants than what I know. stupid, man. Yeah, because, like, I know quite a bit about plants, but you know more, and and you might have an idea that is actually feasible, and I'm like, no, that doesn't work. It's the plants Mm -hmm. need this, and you're like, no. Mm -hmm. I have a a paper that says otherwise. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, it's funny, because, like, I wonder if anybody would be like, man, can you, like, uh, you know, like grow squash or, or, or corn or strawberry? And I'm like, absolutely not. I could just probably grow pot for the rest of my life. Yeah, I just like, <laughs> grow it in my backyard. I, that's all I know to grow. Yeah. <laughs> like, but, um, yeah, I think the the with the family dynamic, it's kind of hard to separate that at times. But everybody else does that. Everybody has a family business, knows that. And that's something that you have to work through that's really hard to separate. It's challenging because, like, you know, you've know, you known them so long that you're like, oh, my gosh, like, am I actually, like... Yeah, 20 years. Yeah, dude. It's it's kind of ridiculous, you know? <laughs> uh, you're like, man, is, is this actually my, my thing, you know, as in, like, working with family and, like, do I go off and, and do my own thing or, you know, but... um. Like, what made me realize it is that um, if you work, like, with certain families and if your family works really well together and you you translate it into a business aspect, um, you strive a lot more than if you weren't working with family. But this is, this is family dependent, of, of course. Yeah, I agree. Um, I'm, we have some friends. Um, their names are the Beesons, mm-hmm. and they have a fireplace store. And they do it really well, but they're kind of like we are that they work together well as a family, but that doesn't mean they don't have problems, but the problems aren't as important as getting the job done. Yeah. And the, and the, uh, obstacles that you've like conquered, you know, like, uh, man, sometimes, like you said, the, the bad parts overweigh the good parts, the things that you need to be worrying about, Mm -hmm. you know? And, um, but man, how long has this business been here? Three, three, like I'm talking from the beginning. From the beginning. From the like oils, hmm. like in mom's basement. Alleged, allegedly. <laughs> um, well, we I can think say it was, now. I think it's three years. So actually, it's three years this month. 
So this is February I, of man, 2020. We've accomplished so much more in three years than what some people can accomplish in 10 years. Really, I, I think. Yeah, but that's it's easy because you already have a team. You don't have to go find a team because mm-hmm. your team is your family. I think that's where I'm getting at. Yeah, but. yeah, yeah. No, really, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're, you're, it's permanent team. Yeah. You know, and um, gr- growing up too, being raised by like um, two parents who work with their kids and they're like still together. You know, we have we have molded our own roles not just in the work environment, but in our family dynamic, um, which translates to your work environment, which makes it so much better. Like, um, you have, like, the spokesman, which is probably dad, you know? Yeah. You have um, the softer one, probably mom, you know? Um, and then, like, you're a mixture of dad, and, and I think I'm more of a mom type, you know? And it, and it really... We complement each other is what I'm trying to get to. Yeah. We complement each other really well. I agree. Um, I think, especially in this industry, right? I think a lot of people in this industry, there's a lot of family businesses Mm -hmm. in cannabis Mm -hmm. um, because it's a wholesome thing that people trust families more, I guess. But um, in Texas, it's really hard to find. But like in other states, family... Families run cannabis industries all the time, Mm -hmm. but it's, it's one of the main, it's one of the few industries that actually has that to where there are more family businesses than there are not family businesses or if you see what I mean. Yeah. 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 Um, I think, I think especially in cannabis is that whenever you are a family business, I think you have a better chance, but it's just how well does your family work together? Mm -hmm. Because that's the limiting factor there. Yeah. And I think when it comes, you can't think independently ever. That's the biggest one. That's like when you're working with family, you are a, you're a true team. Yeah. You will always be a team. You can't like, I'm not saying you can't, but if you want it bad enough, you'll stick with your team. Um, I feel like a lot of people would shy away from what, like, the environment we have, you know? Um, there were, like, there's moments, I think, that some people would have broke, mm-hmm. you know? But, like, it's cliche, but if you if you stick together as a family, you can you can truly accomplish anything. Yeah. Tr- truly. I agree. Like, I, we've seen it firsthand. It, it's cliche, but it's true. You know? I agree, and man, we're blessed. It, it is ridiculous. Like, yeah, I've been I've been dealt a good hand. So. Yeah, I agree. Um, but you know, it doesn't come without challenges that we've had to oh, overcome. Yeah. You know, yeah, like with the smokable hemp ban, and like the smokable hemp ban came right after we harvested our first crop, and we're going to make joints, mm-hmm. and we couldn't make them. Mm-hmm. And like that was such a huge hit that you were just like, "Oh my god, we, we just made all of this. We just wanted to make all this stuff, and we can't do it anymore." Mm-hmm. And like we had all this flour sitting, you know, all, this, all these machines, that all the machines re- that we bought to do all this stuff, and like that's a big challenge that we've had to overcome. You know, like finding out other ways to do it and all this other stuff, and. Like just like in the beginning of growing, we had to destroy four crops, mm-hmm. four total, one outside, three inside, because yeah. we're figuring this stuff out, you know. And I think, um, and that was over like a a, a year or two, like time wise of mm-hmm. going through the crop destroying process or the crop the crop destruction era. That yeah, we went yeah, through, you yeah. Know? Um, but I think if you weren't like. If you're just like a normal business, like that wasn't a family business, you wouldn't have gotten through that because that's a lot of failure mm-hmm. to learn. That's a lot of failure to survive through. Yeah, exactly. Like a lot of failure. We, uh, man, and what you can do at with a little bit, oh, sorry, 
a little amount of people. Does that make sense? Is that yeah? Crazy? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Just um, go with it. Okay. Okay. Um, man, there's like at the least there was probably only four. There's four of us. Yeah. Yeah. And we've been doing it for three years. Now we have seven people. Eight, eight people. Eight people. Eight people now. Which is crazy. Now we're really striving, you know. Um, but back then it was like a slow, it was a slow progression. Yeah. You know? There was only four of us. We can't. It was very slow. Yeah, very slow. We didn't have anything to do at work, so we watched TV. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. We were talking about that we were today. waiting for orders. Um, but, man, now it's it's like, man, sometimes I need help, but you can't, you can't ask for it, you know. So, And I think that adds to. We, we still don't have enough people. I think that adds to our pro- our products. Um, okay. I think yeah, that we- adds to our products too. Is that anything you buy was literally done by us? Yeah. There's no there's uh, no middleman. You know. There's no middleman. There is never a middleman. That those plants, like what you're smoking, has been trimmed, has been watered by. Me or Abby. Yeah. You know, it is there's no there's no employee you don't know about. We want you to know all about us. Oh, we have nine. Nine employees. Including Matt. Oh Matt. Shout out the Roach. I know the Roach. <laughs> Wait, ten? No, JD's eight. Oh my gosh, shoot. We, have 10? we do have ten. Yeah, makes you feel like shit. Yeah, we have ten. <laughs> you forget about your own girlfriend. <laughs> I know, I know, dude. So bad. Yeah, the part two part time employees. Yeah, two part time employees. But yeah, I uh, the Roach man, the Roach. I'm excited, dude. The Roach. I'm um, excited. But yeah, it's coming down. Yeah, the Roach is moving here. Um, Let's uh, kind of go a little bit away from the family topic and let's talk about what we did last week. Skydiving. What? Yeah, we went skydiving. Dude, wait, go ahead. Sorry. I'm yeah, excited. so we went to Dallas. Um, it's Skydive Space Land in Dallas, Texas. Shout out Skydive Space Land. So, yeah, shout out Skydive Space Land shout for sure. Shout out Carl. Carl. <laughs> <laughs> Carl's funny, dude. Carl's this this old uh, Asian fella and he is hilarious and he made the whole experience really fun because you're super nervous going through like the training video and like you you have the chance to die just so you know you know you're if you die it's not our fault you died right <laughs> you jumped out of a plane willingly how many he like 7,000 7,000 jumps. jumps that's a lot <laughs> that yeah. is wild he jumped with Shaq Yep. Um. And Shaq was strapped to his chest, and he was hiding behind Shaq the whole time, <laughs> and he didn't feel wind on him the entire way down because Shaq is so big. So, and this is a small guy. He's probably what five eight. Five, probably five eight. Probably maybe no, a little bit smaller. Five. He might be a little bit smaller. I think. Mm, you think he's smaller? I think he's a little maybe I, like five six. Five six five seven. But. They had and Shaq a, is seven, like four yeah. or something. So how how tall is Shaq? I don't know. Can you um, look it up? Uh, uh, yeah, but um, yeah, go ahead. Two, four, eight, six. Um, man, you, you I just remember, told the whole world your phone passcode. I'm gonna have to change it. <laughs> <laughs> you you damn it goblins <laughs> coming to hack my phone. Yeah. Um, huh? Seven. He's seven one. Seven one. So he's like a foot and a half taller than this guy. Um. So, he was telling me that, like, the, okay, the plane that we were in, you know, yeah. that's the smallest one that yeah. they go in. They had to have a, like, aircraft, like, military-grade swing gate on up. the back for Shaq to jump out of. Oh, because he can fit? He's so big. <laughs> he can't fit out that tiny little door. That's pretty funny. Okay, so let's run him through the process. Yeah. Wait, do we go from when we walked in the building? Because that kind of kind of boring. Uh, now let's do it, Amy. No, we'll go from the training video. Okay. Okay. So we walked into this room, and you have like a 17-minute uh, training video. And they just talk about, like, the regulations and everything and, like, pretty much the law of skydiving. You know, uh, how high will we be going? Uh, when do you pull your chute? Yeah. Um, what you'll be wearing. You'll be wearing a suit and, uh, like, altitude meter type thing that goes on your hand. Um 
So we finished 17 minutes and we walked out into this big area where uh, people are folding parachutes like on the floor. Like, I don't know, there's probably 12 people folding parachutes. Yeah, you're just watching all these people yeah. fold their parachutes. Pretty cool. And then they have jumpers. So the jumpers will jump and come down and they switch. They just get a parachute that's ready to go and then you go with them. Right. Um, so they basically come down, throw their parachute down, put another one on, and then go. Yeah, they jump immediately. Sixteen times a day. Yeah, it, it's absurd. It's it's really crazy. So, yeah. um, Zach and I get strapped up. We were waiting a long time. We waited like four hours. Yeah, it, until our turn was. Yeah, was up. we were the last people, man. We just uh, we were the very last jump. Yep, yeah, very last jump. Sunset. It was on sunset. It was yeah. gorgeous. So, uh, we got our little instructors right, and the, they're holding like your strap. You know, hold, hold my pocket type stuff. Shout out, David. Mine's Shout out there. Solomon. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we we're walking out to the plane, and you know I I was a little nervous, but I wasn't like. Oh wait, hang on. Let's go back up. So okay. we're sitting there for an hour, right? And the nerves started to go away. Like you signed your life away, and you're sitting there after the video, and you're just waiting, right? And there's a jump log that has all the people's names and what plane you're on, right? And so you're waiting for your name to get to the top. And so we waited there for like four hours. And by that time, by an hour, th- like three or like three hours and 30 minutes in, your nerves are gone completely. You're just like, I'm not even nervous anymore. And then the guy comes back in uh, from his last jump and he comes and puts your harness on. And then once the harness goes on, you start getting nervous again. <laughs> I'm like, sweat. Yeah, you start like, you're like, oh, God. We're about to go up there. We're about, We're about, to, go. To, do this. <laughs> We're about to do this. But in reality, he still has to go up and take another person up. So he's just putting it on so you'll be ready, right? But just the whole time you got it on, you're like, oh, no. Here we go. Here we go. And, and, <laughs> scary. And so once your name hits the top, you're like, okay, here we go. And your instructor comes back in, and he's like, all right, let's practice again. What are you going to do? And so we do go through the practice of what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to, like, put your head back on his shoulder Give him a little kiss on the cheek, you know? <laughs> but uh, and then you like they teach you how to arch and all this other stuff, and then like, all right, what altitude are you pulling the chute? And you're like six thousand. Six thousand. And he's like, okay, it's gonna come quicker than you think, so you better be ready. You better be looking. And uh, and I'm like, okay. And then we go get in the plane. And then you can go. Yeah. So we're and by the way, we jumped from fourteen thousand feet. Fourteen thousand. I mean, that's that's the jump. Two and a half miles. In Two there. and a half miles up. Okay, so we're in a line, right? We're like the military, and they're like, all right, let's load up. So you go with your instructor, and you're sitting You're sitting on a very long bench. You're straddling the bench. Yeah, yeah you're straddling the bench, and you kind of hug up to your instructor who's behind you, and, like, we are crammed. I want to say there's 20, 30 people. There's probably, this, yeah, there's probably 20, tiny 25 plane. people in there, yeah. Uh, this plane is probably the length of this room. Yeah, like in, it was a frame with some sheet metal on the outside. Oh, God, it was loud. The windows were held in by, like, there's, like, the spring hook things. Like, they have the spring in the middle of the two hooks. The yeah. windows were held onto the plane by those. So they're, like, rattling. It is the most janky shit ever. But we're, we're taking off, right? And you're looking at your your little altitude meter. 1,000, 1,000 feet, 2,000 feet, 3,000 feet. Around 7,000 feet. I was getting very scared. And the higher you get, the more nervous you get. God, so, like man. at one thousand, you're a little, you're a little shaky. And then the higher you go, the more you shake, the more you shake. And then they're like, "We're halfway," and you're like, "Oh!" I was <laughs> trembling. Yeah, I was uncontrollably. I was too. And I, man, like, I couldn't even talk. When we were in the video, you know, I was like, "Oh, I got this." Yeah. I got this. Throw me out of the plane, you know. Yeah. I can do this. this. Is false confidence. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> or you were trying to perceive confidence. Yeah. You the whole time you're, oh, 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 uh, the I'm film- going to die. <laughs> the, the filmer guy is like, are you ready, Brett? And I'm like, let's do it. Yeah. And I'm just like really unsure. And uh, so there's these hobby jumpers next to the door. So we're around 14,000 feet. They're, they turn around. Everybody ready? Everyone's, wow, this is crazy. And then uh, there's probably four, five hobby jumpers. Yeah, I think and, they're, yeah, right, five. Yeah. yeah, they jump out first, and they jump out as a group. 
right? So they're on the side of the door. And oh, they, tell them when they open the door first. Though. Oh, okay. So it's like this swing. It's like it's a garage. It's basically a garage door. It's a garage door. And when they open it, you just hear that suction. Oh, just screaming, right? And that's when you're like, oh, my God. Yeah, we looked at each other and we were like, Oh God! Like, Here we go. I'm going there. I'm going, <laughs> I'm going there. I'm going down there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so they open the door, and these hobby jumpers, right? They grab each other as like a unit, and they're literally <laughs> hanging outside the plane. Yeah. They're hanging on they outside go, the plane. One, two, three. You just see them. <gasps> this gets sucked. This gets sucked out the side of the plane, and you're just. They literally make it. Literally makes the noise of. Oh my gosh, that's when I got really scared. Yeah. I was terrified. I, I looked at Zach. I was the like, whole plane, the plane's really small. So they all jumped out, and that's like a thousand pounds jumping out of a plane. So they're losing a thousand pounds in a second, and the whole plane's just, whoa, just shaking, shaking because they lost so much weight. And the guy in the front's probably like, oh my God, I just lost a lot of pounds. Yeah. Right there. But, and then. It was me. Yeah, me first. Yeah, yeah, you went first. Who wants to go first? Everyone's quiet. I pointed at Brett and I was everyone's, like, he can go. Everyone's completely silent. And then I'm just like, I'll do it. And everyone's like, yeah, he'll he'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> he'll go first. Yes. So uh, I'm like, okay, here we go. So you, you kind of like, you go down the bench, right? You kind of scoot down the bench. And while you're going up, your instructor is tightening himself to you. So you're you're literally one. He, You are strapped. Yes, like no you space. are a part of him. Yeah, there's no space in between you. And um, Yeah, junk on butt. It was funny. All he, junk on he, butt. He tightened my strap, and he was like, you know, this is the most fun you'll have being straddled by a man. <laughs> <laughs> I was Honestly, like, Damn. yeah. So we get to the door, and, and my my film guy is hanging. I'm gonna go like sweat marks. Is, is is hanging from the edge of the plane, looking in at my face, and and he's like, the wind started. I can hear it. He's like, "You ready, Brett?" And I just like, "Let's do this, man!" And oh my gosh, the it was. I don't know if this was for you. Was it quiet for like four seconds when you jumped? Oh no, no, not for me. Hell no. I don't know. I probably just went into shock. You probably <laughs> did. So, like I in the pl- when you're standing in the plane, the wind's loud, right? Because there's a door, and you're going like 150 miles an hour. So there's wind going 150 miles an hour to the side. Mm. But when you when I jumped out, at least mm. once you leave that plane and that wind hits you, it just <laughs> <laughs> you can't hear anything. It's funny because you hear the plane go away really quietly. Yes, like, it's like and it's like. 10, 15 feet away from you, and it's so quiet, the plane. And the plane's loud as hell. Yeah, it's it's a janky plane. Yeah, it's a janky plane with a big old engine, you know? And, like, whenever I jumped out, like, that's the most violent thing I've ever experienced in my entire life. I uh, I said, uh, I was telling Luke Griffin, he yeah. called me after, and I, and I said, yeah, you know uh, the guitar solo to Freebird? Yeah. I was like, that's skydiving. That's literally what skydiving is. <laughs> that's skydiving. <laughs> Dude, it's crazy. It, But also, okay, you're looking fear in the face. Yeah. You're looking fear in the face. You're but jumping you out of jump, an airplane. When you jump, it is the most peaceful, like, experience. You're floating. Yeah. You can't even, you don't even know you're falling. Yeah, I bet it'd be a lot better with a helmet on because the wind noise. The wind noise is what, like, got me. Dude, it got overwhelming. Like, I was. Yeah, because, I mean, it's just wind constantly in, in your ears, and you can't hear anything. Mm-hmm. Like, my instructor was yelling at me, and I couldn't even hear him. <laughs> and he was on my back. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't, man, when, like, I want to say probably like 8,000 feet. It really start like started to overwhelm me. Yeah, like the the pressure and like and you're in the air for five thousand feet before that. Yeah, <laughs> it's crazy. the The initial jump out is like, God, it's so rewarding. It is because you you sit out there and they ask you, "Are you ready to jump?" And you're literally looking out of the plane at the ground, fourteen thousand feet below you, <laughs> and you're like, and that's the moment you find out what type of person you are. You're either a I'm gonna do this, or you're like, oh, I'm step I can't, back. I can't do this. <laughs> I'm gonna step back. But it's only yes or no. There's no like, uh, maybe you know, it's not like a normal life situation uh, where you can be like, oh, maybe I should do it, maybe I shouldn't. It's either yes or no. That that square that we jumped out of mm. was like the gate of of choice. 
Yeah. <laughs> God, it was scary, man. Well, I was so nervous until I stood at the door and I was like, let's freaking go, man. I was like, I'm ready. Let's go right now. I was just telling myself, I was like, you're probably not going to want to jump. Like, let's be realistic. No one wants to jump out of an airplane. You usually land in the plane. You usually land inside <laughs> the plane. I'm looking at the door. I'm just, I'm not a quitter. Yeah. I paid I paid $300 <laughs> for this. I'm going to jump. And I'm just screaming at the camera, let's do this. It just jumps yeah. out. And it, it was the first, like, three seconds I tensed up. I got really tense. Yeah. And you just, Phew. Yeah, and you just kind of freeze. I lost shock. my breath. I yeah. couldn't even breathe. Well, you're, you didn't yell? No. Oh, okay. Silent. So they say that this happens, right? So when you skydive for the first time, you get so overwhelmed right when you jump out of the plane that they tell you to scream at the top of your lungs while you're jumping out because it forces you to breathe because you're already out of air and there's no air in your lungs. So I was screaming, dude. I was like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure nobody can hear me, but I, damn, I was screaming, dude. After the four seconds, like when we were actually falling, like when you're kind of looking at the ground, mm -hmm. I was like, I can breathe. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh. Yeah. And so I'm screaming, ah! But the first, the first four, I was just, <gasps> and then you hear, oh! was, yes. Golly. But it was, I really liked the, the uh, parachuting. That yeah, the parachuting cool. was cool. That was, that was the coolest was part. Peaceful. For, okay, so from Dallas, I think it was at six thousand feet, we could see Lake Texoma from Dallas, which is on which is like an hour drive away yeah. from Dallas. It's on the border of Texas and Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. and you could see it from Dallas, and we could see it from Dallas. Uh, and did y'all do spins? Going yeah, down? we did some spins. Yeah, so you you pull down like so you got your two your two little levers, right? You pull down on one and you do like this spiral maneuver, right? And it's basically a dive. Yeah, and uh. After you dive, he'll pull up on both of them. And I got this, like, it was a peaceful moment. You don't hear the parachute rattling anymore. It's it's complete silence. And you're weightless. You're weightless. Because you're kind of going up. It's it's amazing. Yeah. It, is, it is the and coolest experience I've ever had. I think we did it at the perfect time because it was sunset. Sunset. And the sun was setting, but it, they usually don't do that. But it, they had a late day, so we were the last ones. And it was awesome. Yeah. Um, 18 degrees. Yeah, it was 18 <laughs> degrees Fahrenheit at the, when at we the, jumped out of the plane. Yeah, at the top, is 18 degrees. Yeah. Yeah, it was freezing. But it was like, that's the most rewarding thing I've ever done in my life. And we had... I'm going to do it again. Yeah, we had talked about doing it again. We already bought our next yep. uh, jump. I, but say, I say we go at the end of this month. We could, yeah. Um, I just want to go just to jump. I just want to jump. No, I agree. Uh, I did get recorded. Yeah. Yes, I yeah my yeah. Ca my camera died. My guy got the whole thing. I still yeah. freaking got it though. They haven't sent it to me. Uh, but. The camera died halfway through, so I got the initial jump out, and then like you know I'm like flipping off the camera. You know, like I I, I got a little little crazy, so I'm like <laughs> screaming at him. I'm like, they said a lot of people do that. I'm like, yeah, flipping it off, and then he comes up to me like literally flies to me. Right. Yeah. Like this guy, he flies your camera you. guy is maneuvering around you. He's doing like circles around yeah, you. And you're just sitting there like, oh, he's spinning you. Like he can spin you. Yeah. And so he comes up to me and he grabs my hands and it dies. Yep. So it's, it's literally just us going like this to each other. <laughs> it's just dies. Like, take my hand. Freeze frame. Take my hand. Take my hand. Save me. But yeah. I think that skydiving is something that everybody should at least attempt to do. Oh, dude. It's amazing. They need to. Go up in a plane and know that they're gonna jump and out. know they're gonna jump. <laughs> they can decide whether or not they do it, but I think going to do it, not jumping, but like even going, you figure out what type of person you are. Yes, we we saw a guy who didn't jump. Yeah, we did see a guy who didn't that jump. Was, he went up in the plane and came back down. That on the was plane. sad. That was really sad. So the jumpers, uh. Or sorry, the people who stay on the plane, like the pilot, lands before the skydivers do. Yeah. Right? Uh, so he comes down alone. And Zach and I are like, oh, my gosh. Like, he, he, I don't think he jumped. And his friends come in like 10 minutes after he, was, he came in. And, oh, that was crazy. And they're like, you didn't jump? And he was like, no, nah, man, I didn't jump. And just like that, 
that disappointment. I was like, yeah, I'll he, never, I never want to be that guy. And they're taking pictures after the jump. Everyone's smiling, but he's like, yeah, he's just so disappointed in himself. He couldn't even think. God, it was like, God, man, and no refunds. Yeah, there's no refunds. No but refunds. I, so. I think that everybody should try to go at least one time in their life. It was oddly peaceful. It was. It was. It was literally and figuratively breathtaking. Yeah. Like when we landed, they did like an interview after, right? And they were like, oh, what was it like? And I was like, uh, <laughs> I have no words. I, I don't Amazing. know. My brain doesn't even work right now. <laughs> uh, the one but they thing, were super nice. One thing I noticed is like when you're in the plane and you're about to jump out, right? The atmosphere, like uh, the setting like being in a plane in the sky and compared to jumping out and being in the sky, complete difference. You think like you go and you have an expectation of what you're going to feel and what you're going to see. It is 1,000 times more than what you think it's going to be. Yeah. And for the people out there that are scared of like when you go on a roller coaster, like your gut, like your stomach dropping, that doesn't happen. Nope. Mm -mm. Yeah, because... Whenever you're on a roller coaster, the roller coaster is pulling your body down when your body's still going up. So all of your organs fly up. But in skydiving, you're not being pulled down by anything. You're being pulled down by your own gravity. So you are you don't ever get that sensation. Mm -hmm. And you don't have a reference of speed. Yeah, because there's nothing around you but air. So you can't... For like, 14,000 feet. You can't, psych, you can't psych yourself out like... Yeah. Oh my god, I'm going to get that feeling, you know, you don't know how fast you're traveling. You you are flying at 120 miles an hour, plummeting to the earth. You fall for 40 seconds. So you went from 14,000 feet to 6,000 feet in, in 40 under seconds. 40 seconds, and you have no idea that it was that long. All you're having the time of your life. Ah, ah, you know, and then, <laughs> and then you, you feel that hand. You feel him grab your hand, the hand of God. You know, he, he goes back, pull. And I'm like, already? Yeah, I know. I want to keep falling, dude. That's crazy. Yeah. I was like a warrior, man. I got I like. You should have kept falling. Honestly. You should have just you know, held it. If you don't, well, okay. oh, if you don't pull it at six thousand, that's no problem. Yeah, th that's like the safe. That's the safest parachute pull distance. Yeah. Um, but now your parachutes have to be. Um, they have like an electronic explosive yeah. in it. So what is that? At Reg three regulated a regulated parachute. Yeah. Um, yeah, it has to be regulated with a uh, electronic deployment system. So at three thousand feet, in case you go unconscious, because a lot like a lot of people pass out. Yeah. Um, so if you end up going unconscious, the parachute will pull itself at three thousand feet. Yeah. And you have two parachutes. Yeah. So if your first one fails, you got a second one. Yeah. Like man, I really didn't like. This is the it's, dumbest sentence I'm ever going to say. <laughs> no, I know exactly but, what you're going to say. But for how dangerous it is, it's pretty damn safe. Yes, it I is, agree. It's pretty damn safe, we and did, I'm surprised. We did some research uh, the next day, and it was... Well, this is Wikipedia, but this, uh, well, <laughs> still, still it was, it was research, on the internet, right? so it must be real. It must be real. <laughs> so they, they were talking about how there was a million, there was a million jumpers last year. Like a million people jumped out of an airplane last year. Um, in uh, the United States, and two people died mm -hmm. out of one million. Out of one million jumps, two, two people died. Two jumps failed out of out of a million, and like that's a pretty good. Uh, I think that's pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty good. And most and like time, that's that's better than driving a car. Like uh, the death rate of being in a car is way higher than skydiving. Mm -hmm. They Every time you get in your car, you have more chance of it dying than you do skydiving. Yeah. They said that uh, most of the accidents happen, happen for, on landing. Yeah, for negligence. Like landing your parachute. Not not that your parachute doesn't deploy. Like, that is nothing. I'm not worried about that. Like, anymore. you hit a tree or something like yeah, that. Yeah, you hit a tree. You hit the ground too hard. You don't, you like, you come in too hot, you know. Um, you land on asphalt or, like, something like that, you know. Um not like when when I was scared about it, you you thinking what everyone else is thinking. What if is my parachute, parachute doesn't gonna, gonna deploy? Yeah, what if my parachute doesn't deploy? 
I'm not really worried about that anymore. Yeah. These no, guys I'm jump not. 16 times a day. Yeah. And people have jumped 7,000 times. Shout out Carl. 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 But they, he jumped 7,000 times, never had a problem. Yeah. Oh, man. The wingsuits. So, um, oh, yeah. My camera guy's name is Bruce. Ooh, wait, wait. Oh, go ahead. We're going to get our license. Oh, yes. We're Dude, gonna I'm get, down. We're going to get our license. I think we need one more tandem jump and then 25 assisted jumps. Yeah. Right. No, 23. 23 is. Two assisted. count and the 25 total. Oh, I need, we need 25 jumps total to yeah. jump solo. Yeah. Well, solo. I think you have to have people with you, but solo. You jump. have to have a group, yeah. Yeah, you have to have a group with you. Uh, in case you uh, go unconscious. Then they can go over to you and pull and, your shoot. And deploy your shoot. Okay, because if you're, if you're facing up, on, like if you're facing up, your parachute has a better chance of not deploying than if you're facing down, right? So they'll flip so, you over. So they flip you. They'll flip you over. Um, but man, I I could do it. I could do it a thousand more times. It I was could too. so exhilarating. Yeah, I could too. I, I, I wanted. I wish we had a good place here to do it because I would do it. Yeah, you can go to weekend. Secret. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, I Hawaii think so. Would be cool. Yeah. Um. I mean, it was still cool over land, but yeah, I think water would be cool. Yes, that would be really cool if you do it on the beach. Like, yeah. oh, I want to go to Dubai you could, and do it, dude. You could RKO a whale from that height. Whoa! <laughs> Boom! <laughs> <laughs> that would be crazy. But yeah, yeah. About the wingsuit. Uh. So they, everyone knows what the the wingsuit is, like the flying squirrel, squirrel suit. Type. Yeah, the squirrel yeah. suit. Um. So people. Don't just do that like on base jumps. They do it out of planes too. You could fall for four minutes without deploying your parachute. Free fall. Yeah, free fall. So people literally compare it to being a superhero. You get yeah. to actually fly. Like you can fly forward. You can fly yourself back. You can do You can flips, be on your like, back, do flips. Yeah. yeah. And there's pictures of like skydivers without the suit. They ride. The, on top of the squirrel suit On people. top of the squirrel suit. So they'll suit. be like surfing. Yeah. On top of it's, the other people. It is people. so cool. Be people surfing. It's so cool. They'll be, but, they'll surf the people. Yeah. Power the people. So <laughs> next, next time we go, we need to, can we post on Instagram? Is that yeah, we're gonna post on Instagram, man. Maybe we could smoke a J in the sky. <laughs> Honestly, we could smoke a J while parachuting. Wait, can they hold our phone? I don't, I don't think they can, but you can. Can you stream okay. off of a GoPro? So really, you, okay. You have to have a certain amount of jumps just to just be to able hold a to camera. hold a camera. You like have to have even over, a GoPro yeah. strapped to your body. You still have to have a certain amount yeah, of jumps you have to, have to even jump with a GoPro. I think it's like 125 jumps. Yeah, that's a lot. Yeah. yeah. So you, you that was 200. 200 jumps. 200 yeah, jumps. We asked them, like, we brought a GoPro, and we were like, "Yeah, can we bring a GoPro?" And they're like, no. "You're actually not allowed to." Like, we yeah. actually we have people that do that for you. Yeah. So, but well, Bruce could hook us up because he owes me a free video. Oh, so just do instead of a video, just, do just a stream. stream. Yeah, just damn. Caprock skydiving session, dude. Right that would up. be crazy. Live stream. Uh, but what what time are we at? Fifty three minutes. Fifty three. Yeah. yeah. What, what about your socks? Actually, I'm wearing your socks. I'm wearing Christmas socks because these are my only clean let, ones. Let, me, let us see him. Let us see him. Wow, wow. Look, Santa. <laughs> Santa's real. I still believe. Then it's got like trees on the bottom. Oh, actually. Pimpin. Good hey. trees. The yeah. But yeah, these are my only clean socks. Uh, so that's what I wore. <laughs> I'm wearing Nike socks with Adidas shoes. I'm actually wearing two of the same socks today. What? I, know, I never do that. <laughs> They're always mismatched. Rose, man. But uh, I think it's trendy. But Is it? Yeah, like mismatched socks. I think it's kind of trendy right he, now. <laughs> no, I'm serious. Like I, I'm not trying to defend is myself. It trendy? Yeah, like what? miscolored socks. Yeah, lunatics. Not absolute not, lunatics. Not like a Nike and an Adidas <laughs> sock. Not like a Nike and an Adidas. <laughs> and an Adidas. And a and Adidas sock, right? Uh. But black and white socks of the same brand. I think, or like different colors. I think that's kind of in right now. That put ah, uh, 
What do you mean? Uh, it makes me if cringe. Clean, dude. It's okay. It makes me cringe, dude. All I'm saying is I've been doing it for years. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> they be, they copy me, man. <laughs> dude, you would show up with years. an inside out sock. Hey, <laughs> as long as it's clean, it don't matter which way it goes. Ugh. But uh, you want to call this one? No, no, no. I have one more thing to talk about. Okay, yeah, go ahead. This is going to be a pause in the video, but um, a cut, cut it. I don't know. <laughs> I forgot. Oh, Zach. <laughs> Hang on. I had something big. It's big. Is it like a plug or? No. <laughs> Don't no, do it's that. Not. No, no, no. Uh, it's not a plug. Hang on. Oh, okay. So, we just watched Ant Man last night. There's not going to be any spoilers uh, here. There's not going to be any spoilers. We're not going to talk about the movie. I want to talk about. The situation of Marvel right now. It is February of 2023. Mm-hmm. Ant-Man Quantum Mania just came out. So that's where we are in the Marvel timeline for Phase 4. Movie 1,556. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was kind of... not. I wasn't disappointed, right? Um, the movie was funny. It was really funny. Yeah, yeah. Um, the action was great. Mm-hmm. Like the action scenes, the fight scenes were really cool. Um, the storyline wasn't quite there, but I feel like that's the new, like this whole entire phase since Eternals has been like this. It's it's too much. I think it's too it's too wild. I think they keep trying to to beat their last film that now it's just out of control. I don't even know what to think when I'm watching one. No, I agree. I don't think they know what they're doing. No. Right. I don't think they know what the people want because stick to like Tobey Maguire's type Spider-Man shit. Well, like, like was, super simple, one villain, one girl, you yeah. know, save the girl, get the girl, you know? Yeah. But now they're like, well, um we're going to kill the girl off and then you're going to be stuck in time and blah 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 and we're going to have some guy that uh has teeny tiny legs and arms and uh, like it's wild. Yeah, I I just this is kind of how I explained it uh, last night, right? I think when Stan Lee died, all of his ideas died with him. I agree. So now they're having to think of new ideas. Mhm. Going forward with this because they can't stop i mean they could they probably should but they can't because they're business right well and these are all based off the comics yeah and like i don't know if there's any comics of this stuff that's going yeah uh the this quantum manium it's a comic book well i'm talking about like uh, the other phase four movies oh no i don't think so yeah so there's some like comic book geek out there that's like Ah, yeah. <laughs> if phase four is actually like comics comic. written by stanley let's know um but i was kind of explaining it like this like in comparison with star wars right after george lucas sold star wars never the same it wasn't the same because they didn't know what the people wanted and they had to create something from scratch because george lucas only did the first six films mm-hmm. those were only in his mind and the only movie that was good was mm-hmm. rogue one because it took place in the time frame Timeline. of those six films. Yeah. But the three after it was somebody's new some new person's ideas. So like yes. that's kind of what I think Marvel's going at right now. Because like, okay, and they're they're still kind of figuring out what everybody wants. So like with Star Wars, they got the shows right. Like all the shows they have done, mm-hmm. they're all really good, right? And they're kind of testing that with the shows, but the movies still suck. I didn't like the movies. But I think they kind of have that with Marvel because, like, Loki was good. And I can't think of any other ones that are off the top of my head. But oh, they were, okay. like, the shows are good, but they're, they Wanda still. Vision. WandaVision was kind of weird. WandaVision was but weird, it was, but it was, it was good. good. It was good. But they need to figure out what the people want. Whoever's Whoever's writing these now needs to figure it out. I just, man, I'm kind of disappointed. They need to stick to the shows. Everyone likes the shows. Yeah. You know, I like the shows. I do too. But when a movie comes out, I'm like, like all right, uh, let's I see don't it. really want to watch it. Let's see how wild this can get. Yeah. You know, it's usually pretty wild. Can't even keep up, you know? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's the whole, the whole shebang. I think, 
Yeah, I'm, I don't know. I, th- I hope Marvel figures it out. I was not happy with this movie. Yeah, I hope Marvel figures it out. Um, instead of this isn't a comedy. This isn't not a comedy like genre. It's not supposed to be super funny. You know, it's not supposed to be super funny. It's supposed to be superheroes. Superheroes. Yeah. It doesn't have to be funny. You don't have to make it funny for people to watch it. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know. I will say this though. This one's hilarious. This, is a really this one was really funny. So it they did it right, but it. like some other movies, they they shove it in your face too much. They're like, laugh at this. Ha, ha, ha. I think the guy who plays Ant-Man is a comedian. Paul Rudd? Yeah, Paul Rudd. He's a comedian. Yeah, he's hilarious. He's so funny. I think that's why those movies are comedies. Mm-hmm. Because from the beginning, that's who Ant-Man is. He's the funny guy. He's, uh, also, right. he's also an Anchorman. Yeah. Anchorman yeah. 2. Yeah. He's a... Uh, God, I can't name? think of his name. Ron uh, Burgundy. Um, I can't. I can only think of Jack Lime right now. <laughs> <laughs> Jack um, Lemay. Jack Lame. Jack Lame. Um, anyway, yeah, he's really funny in that movie too. I think that's probably why it was so funny. But the other ones that are like supposed to be funny, I think that they're just trying to like shove it down your throat of like, hey, laugh at this. Mm-hmm. It's good. I promise. Just laugh. Yeah. Exactly. Um. But yeah, I think that's the best buds podcast. Yeah, yeah call it off. Yeah, I think that's episode four. Um, thanks everybody for yeah. listening. Thank you. Um, you got any shout outs? Uh, skydiving live stream coming up yeah. here pretty soon. I think so, so. I can have an excuse to jump out of an airplane. So, hey, can we put a poll on that? Yeah, yeah let's, let's do a poll. On poll. That. Do you want a video of me or Zach? I wanted of me, you know. Uh, but or whatever you can have it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Put it on me. But, uh, yeah, I think you got any other shout outs? No. Skydive Space Land. Uh, Skydive Space Land. Uh, I think that's it, man. Yeah. Um, so, thanks for listening. Thank you guys. This, this is Zach and I's first episode, so uh, thank you for watching. Come back for the next one, and we will see you guys later. Goodbye, everybody. Yeah, catch you later. <laughs> That's why it's podcast.